His see that how it yeah. snaps his lower body through. That's incredible. Look at his technique too. Look at the finish of it. It's, it's funny that that other guy's so wacky. <laughs> <laughs> I know. See, but <laughs> when you see that, when well, you this, see that perfect Rory's, technique, Rory's Rory's top in the world. That other guy is good, but he's nowhere near this. Mm. He's that guy's good, but he's not. This is different. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That guy's gonna make money and do well for the rest of his life, but. Top, top shit, Rory's got to be. It's almost like a difference. Those dark guys, it's just if you throw a, f a fastball baseball pitcher up there to just throw against them, like, but they're throwing those little darts at the thing, and the other guy's just throwing fast as fuck. Right. There's right. A big difference right, here. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> it is amazing watching people learn to do something that's really hard to do. Yeah. And getting really good at it. When you watch someone do acrobatics or you watch Cirque du Soleil, you're like, what the fuck? Absurd. How? Have you seen the one where they jump in the water? Which one? Uh, um, the Cirque du Soleil. Uh, Le Rev. Did you ever heard of this? No. Bro, I don't even know if it's around anymore, but when I went to Vegas one time, I got fucking baked out of my mind and went to see them. <laughs> and dude, I audibly, like an old lady, I'd be like, ah, because I got nervous. <laughs> they would jump in these little tiny, tiny holes from like 70 feet up, just into a little tiny, but if they missed, they, they're dead. The, the floor moves underwater. Oh my God. So you'll watch it raise up underwater shift heights they'll climb up from one of the and acrobatically climb to the other one and then it'll drop into the water out of nowhere and then it'll raise up a little tiny window they have to dive into dude it's have you seen uh la rev i think is what it was called it will i don't know if it's around but if it's still around go see it because that, that was the so wildest dangerous. shit i've ever seen oh dude every show to me has to be such a high level of precision there is no like you know like a band is like dude you missed that fucking right you can't miss shit. You're not missing a chord. It's your, <laughs> it's your neck in the water. I saw, I saw it years the, ago. The Beatles one at the Mirage. Oh yeah, I think I know. I think Love. I saw that. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Fucking great. Dudes on rollerblades doing flips it's, and shit too. But it's the music. You, you, it also you sort of rediscover the music of the Beatles. Like you forget how good their music was sometimes. So good. And when you hear it in that amazing arena where they have the Cirque du Soleil and the sound is incredible and the visuals are incredible. Yeah. Like these guys, unreal. God in, damn! In a sh you watched the documentary, I'm sure, and it was like, what shocked Hard me the most? Night? Yeah, what shocked me the most was how short of a time they were doing it. Yeah, this wasn't like a 30 year span mm -mm. where you're like, dude, the band made hits forever. No, this was a little baby window. They destroyed, and then poof, like that, it's gone. Yoko Ono, Yoko <laughs> came in, and fucked it all up. I know that's my Bobby Lee, dude. Came in and fucked it all up. Did you ever read the? Um, <laughs> <laughs> did you ever read Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers? No, but I've heard you talk about it's it. It's a great book, yeah. and one of the chapters in the book is about the Beatles, and it's about how the Beatles went to Hamburg, and they were playing in a strip club, and they were playing like eight hours a day. So they were playing so much, and they were so like tightly tuned. They went to, back to Liverpool like, a couple of years later, and everybody's like, "What the fuck happened?" Yeah, like what? They were just so tight and so smooth. Did they go to Hamburg just to get just to like do that, a run to a work. residency? Yeah, they went to work, and so they're they're doing these shows, and they're they're performing together eight hours a day. And so they're writing all these new songs, and they're performing, and I think they had, had to do covers too, and they're just fucking. Putting, tightly putting in their work man yeah just like tightly coordinated yeah like Cirque du Soleil with music watching you know watching Paul uh make like like improv so to speak get back mm -hmm. watching that was I don't think I've ever seen any footage of something so magical happening that they were able to capture when he's like when you hear him mm -hmm. just humming out what he thinks the words might be, yeah. dude, I, I was like, I can't. You're we're witnessing like little magic go yeah. off in his brain. You're watching his synapses fire into being like, get back. What is that? Get back. Get back. And you see, find once he finds it, mm. everything else kind of like appears. It's almost like when you're tripping and you see one thing and then it exposes all this other stuff and you're like, yeah. I see all of it now. That's exactly what that looked like to me, that he found Get Back, and it was like, get back to where you once belong. I was like, holy shit. A lot of those guys do that. Yeah. R Rick Rubin talked about that on the Humming podcast. Humming it out. They sort of like make up words and yeah. shit. And then they start putting words where the sound is. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, they just sort of like feel it. They feel it. Whatever the beat is, they start just talking over it and shit. But then in my stony brain, I think... Did their brain already know 
the words and it, they were just trying to find it. Do you know what I mean? Maybe. Like the, <laughs> I always wondered the that about Jay-Z. Like, there. Jay-Z is so impressive. Like the way he, he can like ad lib lyrics. Oh. Like Rick Rubin was talking about how they'll, they'll play a beat and he'll go in, listen to the beat and just flow with the yeah. beat. Like, like it's stuff that he wrote for weeks and weeks. But he never wrote anything down. No. That always blew my mind. Wild, wild. Like you, I sadly want him to have written one thing down, even that though ab- that ability is incredible. But then there's guys like Nas, who I think is the best lyricist ever, and Nas writes things down, and you can tell yeah. he writes things. down. Oh yeah, because he'll like he'll do a rap backwards, like he'll do the whole. You remember that song? Reverse? I love that song. That yeah. song's incredible. Yeah. That is like one of the most lyrically complicated and beautiful songs ever in the history of hip hop. And it also has the ability to just toss in there, he's getting a blowjob and throws up. That's also my favorite. <laughs> he's a poet. And he's like, she's like, he spits the nut back into my spits the nut back into my dick. The drink goes back into my cup. I throw up. Dude, it's yeah. it's so cool how he was able to tell that story backwards, but also still keep it in his vibe do you know what i yes. mean like it didn't break character it was still nas telling a story like yeah. nas would it didn't get corny at any point or like change shape his new shit is great too i his love new nas. shit he he stays fantastic he stays relevant like if you're a, a like a nas fan you will not be disappointed his new I shit is just like his old shit it's great that He's was the so hip-hop good. that i like jamie and yeah. i talk sometimes about hip-hop but i the new stuff i some new shit i i like a lot but it uh, you know stuff like bro his shit. and Hip hop is dead. Yeah, come on, son. That song comes. So doom, good. Doom, <laughs> doom, 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 doom. That song comes on. You're like, oh shit. Yeah. There's a few songs when they come on. I'm like, oh shit. You know, Gravel Pit by Wu Tang oh, Clan. Love. When that song comes on, check out my Gravel Pit. As soon as that comes on, that's like one of them songs. It just you just start moving. Well, I had I had uh, Pharaoh Monch on tour. I would come out to Pharaoh Monch. Simon Sa- 